Hey everyone, it's Scott from thedailyexposition.com and today we're going to be going over CCleaner version 5.63. CCleaner is one of the oldest and one of the most tried and true PC optimization software in the sense that it helps you clean up your PC from unused junk files, cookies, and cleaning up your registry. And whenever somebody asks what a general recommendation is for one of these tools, typically CCleaner is the one that I'll give them to go ahead and run through the first time. We're going to go through the program entirely and I'm going to go over some of the recommended options that I think you should use. We're going to be reviewing the free version and the download link will be included in the description below. So CCleaner comes with a nice little new feature called EasyClean and there's a new version of this coming out very soon for everybody. And EasyClean is as it sounds. It's supposed to find ways for CCleaner to improve your system performance and it basically handles everything in one go. So it wants to close Google Chrome. I'm gonna skip that for now. The reason that I'm skipping it for now is if I do that, I'm gonna delete all my browser cookies and I'm not very good with remembering passwords, so I wanna keep logged into everything that I can. The easy clean then goes through and it determines that I have trackers, so it's mostly gonna be cookies from various websites, and 602 megabytes of junk. We're gonna review both of those. So if we review the trackers, it says there's three trackers that it can delete from Google Chrome, a bunch in Microsoft Edge, Internet Explorer, and Firefox. I'm gonna uncheck Google Chrome because it's my daily use. And then under megabytes of junk, I can review the junk that it determines. So I've got 210 megs in my recycle bin. Those should be deleted. Temporary system files. Whenever you have a temporary system file created, either by an application or by Windows itself, they're typically safe to delete because the system will recreate them if they're needed. So we can go ahead and delete all these. And then we're gonna go ahead and click Clean Selected. So now it's gonna go through and it's gonna clean out the items that it determined needed to be cleaned. It mostly just removed cookies and various non nonsense files that are on the system. Now, there is a registry cleaner and then there's custom clean and there's a bunch of other very useful functionality. In the paid versions, you get the ability to update software and a bunch of other features, but we'll leave that for another video. In the custom clean section, you can actually break down on a per major application basis and even for specific Windows files. So it's going to check pretty much everything. I'm just going to uncheck everything for Google Chrome because, again, I don't want my Google Chrome files being lost. It can delete everything in Microsoft Edge, everything in Internet Explorer, Windows Explorer. It'll delete the thumbnail cache. I'm going to uncheck this. The thumbnail cache more or less is a really good thing to have and it doesn't save a lot of space. If you don't do it, then what will happen is if you ever reboot your PC, you may notice a time when the icons are loading up and the icons will look basically just like a white box until they render and then they're cached by the system. I would recommend unchecking that. Uh, taskbar jump list can be cleaned out and the run and start menu can be deleted. I'm going to keep my DNS cache unchecked. If you have a very old PC, you may want to go ahead and clear out your DNS cache because this can get quite cluttered after a while. DNS cache will only save you maybe a couple, maybe even like 100 milliseconds if it's really slow when you're visiting a website, but then it'll be cached by the system once again. Everything else in here looks to be fairly safe. Under advanced, you could choose to wipe free space. What that option means is it will go through and it'll add blank files into the spots where the files were previously deleted. So let's say I have an image and I delete that image. The image is not technically deleted. There's just a space that's now empty on the drive for something to overwrite it. The data isn't gone until it's overwritten. What this does is it just goes through and it puts a bunch of blank files in that spot and then deletes them. So that way the data has been overwritten and it's harder to recover. I'm not going to do that because it'll take too long and I'm not selling or getting rid of the disk for this PC. Everything else on here looks to be safe to delete, so we're going to go ahead and run an analysis. So it determines that there's a good chunk of files, about five files that can be deleted from Internet Explorer and Windows Log Files. We're going to go ahead and delete them. And there we go. Same thing under the application. It did the checks under here and that was what was determined to be deleted. Under the registry cleaner, you can choose to disable or enable one of the options. I've never had an issue particularly with their registry cleaner. It's very effective and it's one of the better ones on the market. Compared to many other 
free tools, it gets a lot more and gets a lot more items and it's just really clean and simple to use. So it looks like it determined a lot of files, uh, maybe with the Google Drive file stream plugin that I have on my PC, and something from Glary Soft, Glary Utilities, and these are just obsolete keys and unused file extensions for things that do not exist. So we're gonna go ahead and fix selected. Do you want a backup registry? Typically you want to, if you're running this on a system that's particularly old and hasn't been reset in a while, I'm gonna click no, because I like to live dangerously. We go ahead and we fix all and okay, nothing broke, hooray. Now, under the tools, you'll almost never actually have something break under the registry cleaner. If you do delete a key that's necessary and the program's installed, Typically the program will just re-add the key. Now under the tools, you get a bunch of single use useful functionality. For instance, you get the uninstall tab, which will allow you to just quickly find the every list of all programs that are installed and allow you to easily to uninstall them. I could go through and uninstall these if I want, but I'm not going to. It's not gonna be as effective as something like Revo uninstaller, which will attempt to find missing registry keys. But if you uninstall the program, you can go ahead and run the easy clean and then the registry cleaner, and you'll basically get similar functionality. Now the software updater is mostly gonna be used for the pro version, but it does detect that I have two programs that are out of date, Team Viewer and Notepad++. I'm apparently very behind on both. You could go ahead and push update all, and what this will do is it will pop up and say that you have to pay. So you know that you have things that are out of date, which is useful still but you won't be able to update them unless you pay for the pro version. And the pro version, I believe, has an extended database that the free version doesn't get either. So it might be worth investing depending on what you use your computer for and how tech savvy you are. On the startup menu, you get the ability to enable and disable programs that are launching at start as well as other services. So I have key, um, my 360 total security enabled. If I wanted to disable that for some reason, I'd be able to do so from here. The CCleaner Smart Cleaning is enabled. I would disable this if it would let me. And then under, where was it? Adobe Systems. I have the Adobe Cloud running. I could go ahead and disable this and it wouldn't really cause any issues. Typically what I recommend doing is when you're deactivating items on launch, you only deactivate programs under this menu because that's what's really gonna be draining your performance. I have seven caps installed, which I did a video over, which basically just tells me if I'm using caps lock or num lock or not, since my keyboard doesn't have a num lock indicator on it. And it's extremely lightweight, so it's gonna have minimal impact at all on boot up. Larger programs like Steam, I have to disable because they're quite slow. Again, as I was saying before, the schedule tasks, I wouldn't really bother disabling this. Context menu, you don't really need to disable context menu items if you wished you could. If you had a program installed or you have a program that's installed that you use seldomly but you just don't want it cluttering your context menu, you can go ahead and close it. For instance, here we go. Glary Utilities appears to come up when you're selecting the drive. So if you open up your drive window in the Windows File Explorer, it'll appear. I can go ahead and either delete this or disable it. I'll just disable it. Mostly, actually, I'm gonna delete it because Glary Utilities no longer exists. Under Windows Services, you can go ahead and enable a bunch of Windows Services or disable them on boot up. Again, you don't really need to play with this too much. Under Browser Plugins, what it'll do is it'll scan each of your browsers and tell you what kind of extensions you're running and what it recommends uninstalling. For instance, on my Firefox install for some reason, uh, it's because it's in default. It comes with Amazon.com. This is not something that I really need as a plugin, but it's installed by default. It won't really hurt. I'm gonna disable the Bing because I don't like Bing. Nobody likes Bing. And I'll disable Wikipedia as well because these are all things that if I need, I'm gonna go to it anyways directly. I'm gonna keep the Google extension. I'm gonna disable eBay because I don't really go to eBay particularly too much. I'll leave Amazon because I do use Amazon quite frequently. Web Compat, you should always make sure it still exists. Do not try to delete it. Form Autofill, we'll leave that. Screenshots, we'll leave it as well. Google Chrome has a 
truckload more because I install all sorts of plugins because it's my main browser. I'm not going to mess with those because if I do, it's better for me to go ahead and uninstall them through the extensions menu within the browser instead of just disabling them through CCleaner. Disk Analyzer will go ahead and find the largest files on your system and it will help you find them and categorize them. So if you want to check your system for say if you have any large pictures, well more likely it would be large video files, you're going to go ahead and want to run this scan and it'll tell you if you have any large video files currently on your disk. This is a good way of recouping disk space if you have a very cluttered disk, particularly because you can upload the files, pictures, and videos to something like Google Photos, which while it will compress them, you do get that disk space back. Duplicate Finder does as it says. It will scan all the disks to see if any content is similar. However, it does come with some default settings. It will only check files that are similar under one megabyte. And it does this for a performance reason. If you're using an old hard drive, if you try to check it for files that are say over 1000 megs, what will happen is, is your disk will take quite a lot of time to go ahead and figure out, or it's first gonna have to spin up and it has to check your entire disk. And it's just not really worth it. Under System Restore, you can go ahead and run a System Restore from their Managed Point. Under Driver Wiper, what this will do is it will go ahead and run a, it'll wipe your disk in the sense that it will go through, it'll delete all files that are on the disk and delete. And then it can go ahead and do a secure erase. So a simple overwrite goes through and it deletes everything on your disk. Then it will go through and it'll add a blank empty file all through the entire disk and then it will delete those. So it's done one pass. The more passes you do, the more secure it is. So you could do a very complex overwrite, which will do 35 passes, which means it'll cover your entire disk with all empty files randomly generated and then delete those 35 times. It'll go through it 35 times, which really should be the cutoff point, but even still, just because you've done a security race multiple times, it doesn't mean the files aren't recoverable. The typical traditional wisdom is if you ever really want to get rid of a disk and you were using it in a work setting, you just take a screwdriver for it through the disk because you'll never ever stop somebody from trying to get, get files off that disk if they really want to. But if you're just a conventional user and maybe you're using it as a gaming hard drive, it was your gaming hard drive, and you update it to an SSD or an NVMSD, NVMe SSD, then go ahead and run it and then you can flip it on eBay. You probably don't have anything that you need to be particularly worried about. It. I have an actual dedicated disk on my, on my system that I install all my games to, while my main boot drive contains my main programs and main files that I'm writing to, such as this video that I'm being, making right now. Under the options window, this is when you get to modify some of the interesting aspects of CCleaner. Um, the CCleaner home screen, you could do custom clean, which would be this as the default instead of easy clean. Personally, depending on your level of comf uh, comfortable, depending on how comfortable you are with CCleaner, you'll want to go ahead and set whichever one you think is better. I'm more comfortable using custom clean because I may forget to uncheck a file when I'm running easy clean and now I've just wiped out all my browser cookies and Google Chrome and I have to sign into like 40 different websites. You can also run CCleaner when the computer starts if you use it quite frequently. I did, I disabled this. The less things that are on boot are just better for me. You can add the run CCleaner to your recycle bin and the open CCleaner to the recycle bin. I disable this as well just because it's more clutter. There's no reason for the option to be there. You can right click and empty your recycle bin. You don't need CCleaner to do that. For secure deletion, you can go ahead and set it to do normal file deletion, which will just go through and it won't clear out any white space with empty files. Or you could do secure file deletion and do an overrides by default. You can also wipe the alternate data streams and cluster. Typically, just in 99% of use cases, you'll just use normal file deletion. If you're ever going to sell a disk or an SSD, then you'd want to use secure file del deletion. But for most people, just go ahead and do the normal file deletion. It's fast, it's faster, and it just saves you with so, so much time. Under cookies, you can go ahead, no, cancel. 
What this will do is it'll go ahead and find cookies on your computer and you can whitelist them to keep them so that way you're not logged out of your program, of your websites. As you can see, I have a bunch. I'm not even going to try and figure out which ones are gonna be whitelisted. I'm just not gonna delete them. You can also choose files and folders you wish to see cleaner to remove. Don't recommend doing this unless you have a very specific use case where you have a temp file or temp folders that you're having generated for some program you have installed. You'll almost never need to run this. You can exclude files and folders and registry entries that you wish CCleaner to exclude. This is something that again, you'll only use if, as it mentions an advanced user, because CCleaner is already gonna be very conservative with what it deletes to make sure that your system is still functioning properly. If you have an advanced use case where you wanna make sure nothing is deleted, maybe you have a custom application that you downloaded or it's some open source software that you work with, you can go ahead and add the keys, files, and folders here. But for most people, you'll never need to use this. Under your scheduling window, if you have the pro version, you'll be able to schedule when CCleaner runs and the tasks that it does. We're just gonna skip it because this is the free version. Smart cleaning, again, is a pro only feature, so we'll skip it. Users is a pro only feature, so we'll skip. Under your updates window, you can, you're only able to update manually on the free version. On the pro version, you get automatic updates, which is quite silly because the latest release of CCleaner was a security release, but at least it'll notify you when the update is ready. Under the advanced window, you can choose the cleaning results level of detail. As I suggest, you should get the advanced report as that's the default because you want to know exactly what was being deleted. You're also only, you can modify what CCleaner determines to be useful. So only delete files in the Windows temp folder that are older than 24 hours. This is typically a good means to just make sure if a file has been added to the system and it's being used for temporary storage to help accelerate some sort of application. For instance, a lot of games may write to disk to maybe cache a new zone that you're loading into. You don't want to just delete them within as soon as they're being created because it'll just slow everything down. So doing anything older than 24 hours is a really good practice because you'll you're not typically typically going to be up 24 hours working on your PC or gaming straight. So this is just a really good means of keeping the system running as quickly and as efficiently as possible while also maintaining as much disk space and free resources as possible. You can also choose to only delete files in the recycle bin that are older than 24 hours. If you throw something in the recycle bin, you typically don't want it, so I don't use this option. You can hide warning messages if you'd wish. I would turn this on just because it's free. It, it frankly gets a little annoying after you use the program for a while. You can close the program after a custom clean or shut down after a custom clean. I don't use either one of these options because typically my PC's on most of the time anyways. If you wish to turn them off, then by all means, go ahead and do so. You can also disable the prompt to back up registry issues. Depending on how long you've been using the program, you'll be able to identify if you've ever run into issues. If you never run into issues, go ahead and uncheck it just to save yourself the time. You could save all the settings to CCleaner in any file. This is really good if you're trying to transfer CCleaner settings between multiple systems. But in 90% of use cases, you won't be using it like this. You can also skip the user account control warning and enable Windows jump list tasks. Both of these are fine. Under privacy, you can choose to enable uh, telemetry data that's set to CCleaner or disable it depending on how your stance is on security um, and privacy. I would recommend enabling it or disabling it. And then of course the obligatory upgrade, upgrade notice is there. And that right there is pretty much everything in the latest version of CCleaner. It's mostly been about a revision to the user interface and to just help modernize it a little bit. I do hope that they add some deeper functionality something that's, con that's something more like advanced system care from IOBit. But other than that, I'm very impressed, especially with how the ease of use and how deep it can clean, particularly the registry. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me in the comments section below. And thank you for watching, and goodbye.